Hello, true duelists. It's YGO Strat's Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History, where I'm going to be talking about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh! throughout the years, and some of the other ones that didn't. Today's card, the best or worst spell monarchs got, depending on who you ask in 2016, Domain of the True Monarchs. Domain was first released in the Emperor of Darkness structure deck in 2016 as a lowly peasant rare. Notable reprints to date include a super rare print in OTS Pack 3 in 2016 as well, a rare print in Maximum Gold in 2020, and an ultra rare printing from Ghost of the Past 2 The Second Haunting in 2022. As of this video, it's never been on the ban list, although anything is possible, or so I'm told. A field spell card, its effect reads, While you have no cards in your extra deck, and you are the only player that controls a tribute summoned monster, your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. If a tribute summoned monster you control attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack during damage calculation only. Once per turn, you can reduce the level of one monster with 2800 attack and 1000 defense in your hand by two until the end of this turn, even after they are normal summoned or set, and even if this card leaves the field. What a card. Buffs your attacks for you, helps you make your biggest and best monarchs easier to summon, and with the right setup, it doesn't even let your opponent play the fucking game. What more could you want? And really, that there sums up its role in all the decks it's been played in. Because it may shock you to hear this, but this card has been played in very few decks, and most of them are just monarchs. The first deck to play this, to, I, I know this is going to blow your mind, was Domain Monarch. Wow, I know. This was THE budget deck of 2016, with the deck more often than not just being three copies of the structure deck itself, and using the Monarch strategy to summon out a Monarch, slap Domain onto the board, and win by the virtue of having the biggest monster and not letting your opponent make their plays from the extra deck. The best and most reliable version of this deck would often tech in things like Vanity's Fiend and Majesty's Fiend as well just so that the opponent could further not play the fucking game. This was an effective strategy to win games, and while it was pretty fragile and very telegraphed, if you couldn't break it, it, it was a game winner. And the deck did win games more often than you might think. But it wasn't the only version of Monarchs, as what would come to be known as the strongest way to play the deck, funny enough, would go against the entire first sentence of Domain. Extra deck Monarchs still played Domain just because of how useful it is for getting Monarchs onto the board. Making a copy of Aether a level 6 means it only needs a single monster to tribute summon it out, giving you the bonus Monarch from the deck with an actual plus. This was combined with cards like Brilliant Fusion to summon Gem Knight Seraphonite to give the deck an extra normal summon, and get the most out of new cards like the Prime Monarch, which was useful not just as tribute fodder, but even as Xyz material for strong generics like Plates or Shark Fortress to help disrupt boards or make a quick OTK. It's kind of bonkers just how much better the deck became with the extra deck if only because so many of their cards are so anti-extra deck, not the least of which includes the Monarch Storm 4th, easily one of their best cards. Still, this was a very strong and competent deck, and I got the most out of Domain's level reduction and could use that boost to make the big Monarch's 3600 attacking beaters to help clear boards. Surprisingly enough though, this isn't the only deck to have ever played the card, with some builds of True Draco, particularly the Demise variants, often playing it in the side deck. True Draco has a history of abusing Monarch cards for themselves, most infamously with things like Stormforth or the Monarchs Erupt, but in 2017 it wasn't uncommon for them to play an extra copy of Domain in the side deck for things like the Zodiac matchup, or anything else that was extra deck reliant. It wasn't always as impactful in, say, the Mirror match, and it did conflict somewhat with True Draco's field spell in terms of wanting space on the field, but in game 2 if they would go first, it could tech in that copy of Domain to further lock the opponent out of the game, especially when coupled with cards like Skill Drain or a monster and spell immune masterpiece. It also had the benefit of buffing the attack of the true Draco monsters to help them clear fields, which was solid. Not that the 23 to 2500 stat line was weak, but making them instead 3100 to 3300 helped the deck to clear some bigger monsters on boards. There's also the pseudo incidental synergy where if you had diagram up the opponent couldn't run their monsters over in battle and then on your turn you could play domain and buff your monsters to beat them over it's a, it's not an often or consistent play but it is technically possible and that's funny and beyond that the card has remained in the domain of the true monarchs 
<laughs> Get it? It's only played in, in Monarchs. Tribute summon decks are few and far between in this game. And beyond the two decks I've mentioned, the only other relevant one that's been around in the last couple of years has been Flu Wanderees, who themselves have a much more impactful field spell for themselves, on top of not needing the attack buff when their boss can beat over everything else in the game anyways. And the Emergency Zeus play, if nothing else, makes their extra deck worth considering and playing around with more so than Domain, even if they are playing a Monarch normally anyways. These days, as I've said, it's pretty much only in Domain Monarchs, and unless Lithium himself is the one piloting it, it's probably not topping, or so it would seem. It's an interesting little card, the level modulation making the Monarchs easier to summon to get around the need for two pieces of tribute fodder, something made even better with cards like Stormforth to just tribute an opponent's monster with. The attack buff is never a bad thing, and while the extra deck lock encourages the most degenerate style of play possible, it does at least require you to not have an extra deck either to make it a little more fair or at the very least to force you to rely solely on the strategy that is most infamous for bricking. No matter what you do to a tribute summon deck, there's always going to be some amount of luck factor needed because you need that right mix of tribute fodder and tribute summons, so sometimes the deck will simply lose to itself, and that's probably this card's one saving grace at least in the public eye. As it stands, it's one of the better pieces of support Monarch got in 2016, which is saying something since that whole structure deck was just phenomenally solid. I suppose it's worth noting that the effect to lower levels is a soft once per turn, which means if you have two copies of it, you can reduce a Monarch down to level four, or even lower if you have three, and then just summon it without tribute summoning. They won't get their effects, so this is a terrible idea most of the time, but hey, you do you. If you can reduce Aether down to level two and then go sprite combo, I'm gonna be impressed. I'll think you're stupid, but I'll be impressed. Overall, Domain is a great card for a solid deck. It's a piece of legacy support for a fan favorite archetype that did the impossible in helping them to unbrick a hand by making monarchs easier to summon. It didn't fix the deck by itself, but it helped make them playable and even gave the deck a name in Domain Monarchs. It is a staple of its deck and one that certainly made an impact on the game, even if only for a very brief period in around about 2016. And so that's our look at Yu-Gi-Oh! single card history, Domain of the True Monarchs. Stay tuned for our next video and feel free to suggest some cards to review or what type of video it is you'd like to see. Don't forget to like and as always, subscribe to YGO Strats to impress your smoking Italian wife and so you too can be a true duelist.